Hi, everyone. Hi. Welcome to Paracozy Book Club. We're so excited. Tonight, we are talking about The Vampire Book Club by Nancy Warren. <laughs> and this is Jesse. If you guys don't know Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to say hi? Give yourself a little background. Um, yeah. Um, hi, guys. I'm joining Lucy here tonight. Um, I am a paranormal romance author primarily. Um, I have some books. If you want to check them out, uh, my website is just jessieelliot.com. So you can hang out with me on Instagram and TikTok at author Jesse Elliott. And I'm also on YouTube um, at author Jesse Elliott as well. And you also have vampire books. Yeah, I do. They are um, steamier than the book we read for book club, but <laughs> it's interesting. But there's a lot. Like, so just so you know, mystery writers love series. So you have, there's four books out now, or five? Uh, five. Five, and then there's going to be eight total, right? Possibly more. We're okay. not sure. Yeah. It'll just never end. <laughs> Who knows at this point? Yeah. <laughs> so they're really good. They're uh, the Charlie Travesty series. And it's like a new spin on vampires and not like, um, like the whole world is vampires. And they're like, yeah. Yeah. And it's very kind of dark and gritty. And there's a little bit of like dystopian flair, but it's not like a huge, it doesn't take over the mm -hmm. book. Oh. All right. Scott, who's here? Hey, Brooke. And April, hello all. Almost forgot about book club. I'm joining from the gym. Wow, that is dedication. Thanks, April. I skipped the gym tonight, so good for you, April. It is hard to go to the gym in the evenings. Like, I'm into dinner mode. And just so you know, to prep for today, I baked cookies. So, like, <laughs> April, just work out for all of us. Yes, please. Hey, Amber. Um, and hi, Trisha. And... Because you're saying hi to each other. It's so cute. Hey, Donna. Hello from Central Coast of Australia. Wow. Cool. Um, Amber. Awesome. Hey. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. So let us know. So we're going to recap the book for you. Um, Jesse's going to do the first half, and then I'll do the second half. But let us know in the comments, like, what you gave the book. Like, I think everyone saw mine. I, like, read it the first day. And I don't know that I want to like say what I gave it. I'm <laughs> what other people say first, um, and then I'll go ahead and give my read. <laughs> okay. I don't know. So I don't read this genre a lot. This was my first, mm -hmm. like, really my first mystery, and definitely my first like cozy. Um, so I went. I went into it. Like I read the synopsis. I didn't read any of the reviews because I don't like to do that before going in just in case there's any spoilers. So I went into it like knowing the gist of it. Mm -hmm. But like I I didn't really know what to expect, like genre expectation wise. Um, so I will say I enjoyed the first half more than the second half. Um, and <laughs> You can go ahead and sum it up and then we'll just recap everyone's ratings at the end and then give ours. Yeah. Okay. So basically the story starts with our main character, Quinn. She is moving to, and I mispronounce it every time. Do you know how to pronounce the place? Bally de Hag? Bally de Hag. Um, she moves there after doing a spell to try to save her ex-husband. That doesn't mm -hmm. really work. And this is kind of her punishment. Um, and her first day there, she is taking over this bookstore and she finds a dead guy behind the cash register. And so the beginning of the book is basically her getting her lay of the land um, and meeting kind of like all the characters of the, the town that she's going to be living in. Um, and that was the part that I really enjoyed was the descriptions of all the places that she was going. Um, I'm not usually one that likes a whole lot of description in my books, but being that this was like a, a different type of place that I've never been to and that I could see myself wanting to visit, I thought it was really cool and I really liked all the descriptions. Um, but yeah, I'll go ahead and tell you guys, I gave it <laughs> two stars. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, 
like parts of it I did enjoy, but overall, like by the end of it, I was a little disappointed. But yeah. Were you disappointed in like the mystery wasn't complicated enough or like there just wasn't enough, like you didn't really like the main character? The main character was fine. I didn't, honestly, I didn't really feel anything like special about her. I feel like we didn't get a whole lot of her character because there were so many other characters that were on the page and the book was quite mm -hmm. short. It was like what, 250 pages? Like, it was really quick. Yeah. yeah. It was a quick read. Yeah. Um, so I feel like if I can look past, if I look at it as more of like surface level stuff, I enjoyed it. It was easy and <laughs> it was a, it was a good story, but I just wanted more, like more in depth of like, um, like why she was there. Like we know on the surface, like why she was there and it was supposed to be like, kind of like a punishment, right? Cause she used her magic right. she was supposed to, I would have liked to see more of like it didn't really seem like a huge consequence oh yeah it was like i would like to be given a store of my own to run with no boss and make my own hours and a free plane ticket to ireland and a free place to live right and a hot vampire who's really rich <laughs> like, yeah i kind of had a hard time seeing that as a consequence um <laughs> but i mean if she wanted and she didn't seem too sad to be leaving her job. She was a librarian at a law firm and she, it wasn't anything special for her. Um, so it almost seemed like this was a blessing in disguise other than, you know, finding a murdered person. Um, yeah, because she really didn't have a life. She's like, uh, I don't have any friends. Um, yeah. I don't have a boyfriend. So it's like, who cares where she lives? <laughs> right. Didn't even matter. Yeah. Um, so I guess I would have just liked more, just more of everything. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll let you talk about the second half before I like start to go into sure. like what I wanted to, to see from so, her. So basically she, we start out, she, she meets Lucinda and Lucinda is another witch and she like is like, oh, I have the keys to your shop. And then she finds out like everybody has the keys to the shop. And it was kind of weird because she kept calling it her shop where I was like, it's not your shop. It's on loan, but she like took possession of it immediately. Well, my shop this and my shop. So I thought that was kind of odd. And then also the other thing that was weird is, so she meets this vampire, Lachlan Balfour, and he lives in this place they call the Devil's Keep and he's super sexy. And so she is a witch. So she said she installed like a super security system for the store, but really she just can sense it. So she sensed that people were in the store. She goes there in the middle of the night. She finds the vampires meeting. And one of the people, this was like a weird side story where there was a famous author who fell off a cruise ship, is missing MIA. He happens to be there in the vampire book club because one of the members was a huge fan of him, saw him fall overboard, rescued him by turning him into a vampire because he was going to die. So then there was the question of, well, did he kill the people because he was really thirsty for blood or something because he was new? But they didn't really also, I thought, let me know if you think differently. They didn't really explain too much how vampires worked and the rules for this world. Yeah, I was, this might be a little drastic saying this, but I didn't really see the importance of them being vampires, I guess. Right. Yeah, they didn't do anything special that made them not regular human beings yeah other than like that split second of her being like oh could it could he be the killer right right like, i don't yeah, know i wanted super strength super speed i don't know <laughs> some yeah. other super vampire thing so anyway so the guy that's that she finds that's been killed he's married and he has a kid, like an adult kid or something so here's the crazy part so we'll just skip to the end his wife is the murderer and like the weird part is the guy was like tripled, like um, cheating on her and he's cheating on her with Lucinda, the first witch that she met when she got there and cheating on her with Rose Higgins, who's married to the butcher and also cheating on her with Karen Tate, who owns a secondhand clothing store down the street. And so this woman's, this is why sometimes like it got we it just got weird. The only thing she cared about was that, he might not leave the bread shop to his son, which I was like, I don't know how profitable bread shops are, but he could go to college, I don't know, and do something else. 
about his yeah. life. Well, she was like concerned that like his money would go somewhere else if he got married again. Yeah, she could. I mean, if she was really that worried, she could have just socked it all away now. He was obviously yeah. busy seeing three other women. <laughs> right? Yeah, I guess like her motive didn't really. It was yeah. a little too warm for me. <laughs> so when she finds the vampires, they all get together and they're like, okay, we're just going to solve this together. And the rich, famous vampire is like, uh, Lachlan's like, I'm going to throw a party in your honor for coming here. And when we have the party, then we're going to scope out suspects. And we think that one of them will show up. And so, um, yeah, that in the, the police that they call the guard, I guess, in Ireland, didn't seem very effective. Like every time they need to interview someone, they would ask her to go across the street to the butcher shop, get the person they suspected and bring them back to her bookstore to interview them. So yeah. I feel like they should have gone to the police station, right? I Yeah, and like the fact that they were kind of bringing her into the loop on everything. And, and I guess I was kind of setting it up for her to like start sleuthing and trying to figure out like what was happening and who did it, but yeah, it was weird to me. That was a little weird. Also, I thought it was odd that, and I, maybe this is, goes more into the world building later, but I thought it was a little odd that she like met L Lachlan and she's like, what is a vampire? Like, she, how could you be a witch? No, <laughs> they exist. Yeah. I don't know. But anyways, um, yeah. <laughs> what else? Um, was there anything else that stood out to you? Um, I'm trying to, I, so I did go and read the reviews after I finished because I wanted to see if mm -hmm. other people felt the same way as I did. I was shocked. I don't mean this in like a mean way. I was shocked mm -hmm. at how many people like thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Maybe it's just their genre. It was my genre. <laughs> but there was a couple of like, lower starred reviews that were comparing it to Nancy's other series. And it, they felt that she, that it was kind of like a copy and paste of like the knitting mm -hmm. series. And then they just, she just like added different characters and it wasn't, it was kind of like, uh -huh. I don't know, like cookie cutter of her previous stuff. Um, That's right. The vampire knitting. I haven't read the vampire knitting series. So maybe someone else can chime in if they think it's the same. Let's see yeah. what we got. Amber said four. Brooke is still reading it, but gives it four so far. Um, Ivy liked it. Trisha said four. Yeah, lots of fours. Uh, Jesse, when it's trying to jump in, it can't be hard to enjoy. It's true. Um, uh, Amber, they didn't have a police station nearby. Oh, that's, that's right. right. They were in a yeah, small town. They called the doctor instead of the police because it was that's the right. To get there. Forgot about that. Uh, with first in a series, short cozies, and especially paranormal cozies, there's usually not a lot of character development and background. You have to be kind of be in it for the long haul. Oh. Okay, that's interesting. All right. Yeah, I know that, yeah. I guess that makes sense if they're so short, you can't do any character development. Yeah. Yeah, Trisha, I like the cat. Oh, I forgot about the cat. Yeah, that was right. There was a cat. There is no way I would ever, I don't care what punishment, I mean, pseudo soft punishment there is I would take my pet with me I can't believe Lucinda just left her cat yeah with no instructions <laughs> well no didn't it didn't she take the cat or the cat because the cat found its way back to the cottage like I don't think it was I didn't think they said where Lucinda went okay or what her punishment was yeah. um I, yeah I feel like kind of I feel like these kind of cozies use the first book to really try to hook you just enough that you're like, okay, I liked it enough that I want to know more and end up reading book two. All right. Yeah. Cause you're like, I have so many questions still. <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm like, I feel like I especially didn't even really like know the main character all that much. Mm -hmm. She was so busy the whole book trying to solve this murder. Right. Uh, Brooke, she did take the cat. The cat went back. That's so weird. I don't think my cat would leave me. <laughs> to go to a stranger. It's like, the cat's like, I really like this house. I'm just going to stay with the house. You yeah. move wherever you want to go. <laughs> uh, but I miss that. Thanks, Brooke. Uh, I mean, I thought the cat came back. Yeah. Uh, anyway, she didn't leave the cat. The cat came back to the cottage. I think that's crazy, too. The cat's like, yeah. I really like this place. <laughs> I'm not moving. 
<laughs> and after, so that just reminded me, after the first time that Quinn talked to Lucinda through the mirror, I was kind of hoping that would happen more. And maybe it does through the series. Because um, mm. I, I would assume the series follows the same main character. It's not like a series of standalones. I, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I would like to, I would hope that there's more of that. Because she seems, even though she's not there, she seems like a very important character. The Lucinda, yeah, and we also don't even know. I also thought it was a little odd. So let's just go back to the whole punishment. So she's punished for keeping her husband alive, but she artificially kept him alive for two months. Like, how is this like super relocation witch team not know that she's doing illegal things for two months? Right. <laughs> I feel like they should have caught her sooner. Yeah, unless they were waiting it out. To see. Yeah. Maybe they for some reason knew that he was going to die anyways. Oh, Trisha, you find out more about the cat in book two. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe the cat was connected to the cottage somehow. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, yeah, Caroline. <laughs> um, it was playing on that the cat may have been a familiar and knew that Quinn needed help. I don't know. I feel like if I was a witch, Lucinda, who's just been punished, I might need help from my own cat. <laughs> well, yeah, I was just gonna say, like, isn't the whole thing with familiars that they're tied to the witch? So wouldn't Quinn maybe like need to find her own and not take Lucinda's? I don't know. Yeah, bring her own from Seattle or wherever she came from. Yeah. Everyone should get their own cat. <laughs> Can you imagine getting a house and being like, so this house comes with a cat? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, I thought extended his life i thought it extended his life um Caroline. yeah i don't know i think i mean it was two months that she extended it and then he died and it sounds like he died and then after a while then they finally figured out that she had done the illegal magic or something mm -hmm. which like i would also like to know and again this might be explored further into the series but i think it would have done well to set it up in the first book to kind of get the reader to care about the main character more but like i would like to know what her magic does and like how strong it is and like stuff like that i just feel like the magic aspect of it mystery mm -hmm. aside like the magic and like the paranormal aspect could have been set up a little bit better yeah i agree i don't really feel like she did a lot of magic like no. she she figured out how to talk to her through the mirror mm -hmm. And then she had this awful truth potion, which the other witch was like, this is uh, disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> like knew right away. Um, what else did she, oh, she knew that someone had been at the bookstore. Right. Um, okay. I don't think she did anything else magical. Did she light a candle once, I think? Yeah, it wasn't, there was nothing that I was like, oh my gosh, like, really on the page, like action stuff is going down. It wasn't, it was very subtle and like almost like, oh, she turned on a light switch or she did something <laughs> mundane, but it was magical. It wasn't really yeah. like, there was no emphasis put on it. Um, reading comments now, all right, <laughs> ex-husband. Yeah, I don't know, I, what else was weird? I thought it was odd that, um, she like, oh, so what's her name tells her about the, so that whole thing with the bottle and then the hot, like, it sounded like the guy, the bartender was sexy, right? Like another potential love interest, maybe? No, I thought more, wait, I'm trying to remember. She goes into the bar because the bottle supposedly is special to only be sold from that particular bar, I thought she was investigating, right? And then the bartender was like, she's like, oh, who buys this? And she's like, only the dead guy was the only person who bought it. And then I thought you mentioned that his wife bought it. And that's how he, she kind of figured out it was the wife that killed him. Yeah. Because they. Sean O'Grady is the name of the bartender. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it was him. Because I think he did like a little like flirty thing. Tried to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. here, my question is, why wouldn't you share that Eileen bought a bottle? So Sean O'Grady didn't tell her that Eileen bought a bottle, I think. Let's see. Does anybody else know? 
I don't remember that. Ivy, since she was on punish, she was already on punishment. I thought she had to be careful about using her magic. Oh. Yeah, I do remember Ooh. that being like sort of mentioned. I don't know. I still would have liked to see it. Because like she, she wasn't, I could see her being careful about the kind of magic that was she was not supposed to be doing. But I would have liked to see some other stuff. Well, I'd also like to know, like, can you just tell everybody you're a witch? Because she's like, oh, the the children asked me if I would save their dad. So obviously they knew that she was a witch. Yeah. And also, I don't know, she kind of felt like a doormat because she's like, oh, my ex-husband had an affair with my best friend. But it's no biggie. We're all best friends. And I'm the godparents parent yeah. of their children. Yeah. <laughs> A I mean, I'm all about forgiving. I don't know if I'd do that. <laughs> um, a brick. There was a part where Quinn mentioned she felt she should back off of her craft just because she got so caught up in her feelings she used it inappropriately. Oh. All right. Even then, it did sound like she had to mix potions. She wasn't able to just, like, point her finger and right. zap magic out, I think. So... Yeah. And then, then at the end, she ends up confessing. The woman confesses to the priest anyway. Right. So, which honestly, this is the priest's fault. If the priest had stopped this guy from doing all this cheating, none of this would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then there was that weird part with the photographer. So someone kept slipping her pictures, which I don't understand why you would slip pictures to the new woman. Like that just got into town. Because she doesn't know anybody. Like, so how right. she, she was obviously gonna have to talk to somebody else about it anyways. I mean, if you wanted to send anonymous photos, I would think you'd just send them to the police and then they could investigate, right? Yeah. But again, they're trying to set her up as like this great witch detective. So <laughs> um Let's see. Yeah, what was that crazy love triangle? Really okay. Rare. Yeah. So maybe there was a love triangle. I don't know. She, I guess she didn't really flirt with O'Grady, but I thought she thought he was hot. Or mentioned that no, he was I mean, Or is, is Amber talking about the um, Declan and... Oh, the love oh, triangle. I mean, that was, that was a love rectangle. Was, wait, no. Because there, there are four. There were three. He was having an affair with three different people. Plus, he had a wife. Yeah. Guy was busy for a small town. <laughs> uh, Burke, she did conjure fire in the fire pit. Oh, that's right. She made fire. <laughs> and I don't know about, like, um, the, like, if you're talking about the love triangle with uh, the bartender with Sean mm -hmm. and Laughlin, I don't know. Maybe I'm just like so used oh. to in your face romance that I didn't really see oh. it, even like yeah. into that with Lachlan. So. Oh, Amber said she met her ex, that weird love triangle. Her ex. Oh, she yeah. Met her. Yeah. yeah, that was crazy. Um, Trisha, Declan and what's her name would be good together. Declan and what's her name? Declan is the guy that died. I was going to say Declan. <laughs> 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 What's her name? Declan would be good, I guess, with anybody. He sounds then, like yeah. He didn't seem to be too picky. Yeah, he's busy. He's not busy running bread and buns, so he no, could no, hang out. <laughs> uh, the witch. He could be good with the witch. Declan and the witch. Oh, Lucinda, the original one. I don't know. At first, before Lucinda said she was having an affair with Declan, she sounded like this crazy old lady. I thought she was like a geriatric senior citizen in the way it was described. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, because she meets, um, who does she meet? She meets that woman who owns Granny's Drawers, which I don't know, it's Granny's Drawers, like a old people underwear store. <laughs> That's what it sounds like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, or are these real drawers, like furniture? I don't know what yeah. she's selling. But when she offers, to, Karen offers to hang out with her, she's like, oh, finally somebody my age. And I thought that was because Lucinda was like some like decrepit old lady. Yeah. <laughs> Unless Declan had a thing for like old ladies. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if the guy just didn't discriminate. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> but I like how Rosie, the butcher's wife, knows her husband knows that she cheated because they had to do their little interviews at the store and then still shows up with her at the party. <laughs> that yeah. the vampire like, A lot of it, I felt like they set it up uh, and things just didn't line up. For me. Yeah. <laughs> um, the witch. Uh, Trisha, isn't Declan the vampire? No, Declan's the villain, the victim. He's dead. He's the guy that was cheating on his wife. The the vampire is named Lachlan Balfour. Which is a very cool name. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Burke, Burke, Lachlan's the vampire, yeah. Hey, Decora. Hey. Um, no, it was an antique shop. Oh. Granny's doors. I guess, yeah. I guess that could work. It still sounds like an old person, like, lingerie store. Yeah. Like, I feel like there'd be, like, big shorts-looking underwear. <laughs> <laughs> like, like legs at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Um, I meant Lachlan. Yeah. Okay. So Lachlan in The Witch. Oh, she's saying, like, Lachlan and The Witch. I mean, went. I hope that's where the series is going. Uh, there was that one moment that that I picked up on that when she was – it was like at the party scene when she was accusing whoever and he, there was a line where he like steps towards her and like, it's mm -hmm. going to protect her. And I was like, all right, fine. That's all you're going to give me. Oh. All right, I'll take it. Protect her with what? His uh, non-existent vampire powers. There were no. <laughs> yeah. Like they didn't even, like really drink blood. They just get it from a blood bank. Like, yeah, you're going to do vampires. <laughs> Amber, I thought it was a weird name too. Um, I like the name Lachlan. I thought it sounded no, I think cool. She means Granny's drawers. Oh, Granny's drawers. Yeah, <laughs> Granny's drawers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. What What was your favorite part of the book? My favorite part of the book. Um, I don't know that I had. I think my favorite part of the book was the party at the Devil's Keep. We finally get more description there. I felt there was, like, yeah. there was so much at the beginning, but I couldn't really picture his place. Mm -hmm. And they made such a big deal. Like no one's ever been there. Nobody's right. ever been inside. And it's like this huge mansion castle looking thing. I, because there was no description. I automatically just thought of Dracula's castle. <laughs> I was like, it's all made of stone. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was your favorite part of the book? Um, I, there was one scene that I liked and it wasn't even, uh, Quinn was in the scene, but it was the interaction between Lachlan and I'm going to get his name wrong. It's, it's the new vampire. Who's the author. Oh, like, the guy, the guy that's clueless and is like, yeah. maybe you've heard of me. <laughs> Quinn and Lachlan's kind of like giving him the side eye. Like, don't, don't say too much. Like. Yeah. I like that scene. That was fun. Um, I still don't know how to pronounce the cat's name. I totally forgot. Saridwin? Uh, Saridwin? Saridwin? It's C-E-R-R-I-D-W-E-N. Carrotwin. Oh, Carrotwin. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I, like, kind of chuckled every time because I listened to most of it on audio. Mm -hmm. So, like, Carrotwin, I'm thinking, like, so it's got to be an orange tabby because, like, it's carrot yeah making carrots and then i was totally confused at the end when the antique book expert who also happens to be a real estate agent wants to open up a knitting shop i was like <laughs> why that guy I mean, rafe crozier they brought in the from the other series and she was trying to tie them together maybe i don't know is does anybody know was rafe crozier from the other series for the vampire knitting also, if it's such a small town that, like, the police aren't nearby, maybe the realtor has to also do something else. <laughs> Probably, like, one real estate agent. Like, I don't know. It was a weird combination. Yeah. I sell real estate. I collect antique books. Yeah. And I just, for fun, want to open up a vampire knitting shop. Or he didn't say vampire, just a knitting store. So... That was odd. Because then I was like, I don't understand why this is being brought into the story at the 11th hour. <laughs> That's all I can think about is that she was trying to weave it, like Easter egg it with her. Oh, um, for something else. Yeah. 
Um, Amber, I would have loved the reveal to be fleshed out more because it could have been such a cool scene. Yeah, I just felt For like it was very. She just confessed, yeah, to the. I was like, when when we got into that scene and she just started confessing, I was like, this can't be it. There's got to be some twist. It's not actually her. It's someone else. That I'm gonna go. Oh, I can't believe. But no, it was. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, April, I like the name Granny's Doors, but that is because it made me think about all the cool things I would find in my grandmother's drawers and cabinets. Oh. Do you go through your grandmother's stuff? No. No. <laughs> I feel like I would get in trouble for going through my grandmother's stuff. <laughs> You'd be like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, Ivy Strong, the reviews mentioned a crossover, so that was probably it. Oh, that was the crossover. All right. Um, yeah, maybe that makes sense if like you have read the entire vampire knitting series and then you're like waiting for that crossover character to finally like make an appearance. But it was kind of like, he seemed more like ominous and menacing because he was like, I want to buy this place so that I can set up my knitting shop here, which I don't know anything about the other series. I don't know if they lost their knitting place. <laughs> they need a new knitting place. New knitting place. I don't know. Or do you think you'll read the rest of the series? Um, I will probably not. Uh, only because I'm not really into paranormal these days. I'm like going through a contemporary phase. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nancy Warren isn't done with the knitting club. Oh, so the knitting. Probably trying to feed readers through and get them in oh. the series. Yeah. I mean, I do like her concept. I can see where they're appealing because you're like, oh, instead of killing people, vampires are reading books together. Oh, instead of killing people, vampires are knitting socks. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's unique. Oh, I almost forgot. So we do have a giveaway. Um, it is book number two in the series, which it sounds like everyone likes it. Um, so let's see. I mean, I actually like that it was the wife. It made sense instead of some random person popping up. I hate when they do that. Yeah. yeah I don't think I would have liked it if it was just some random person that came in in the last chapter and was like, I killed mm -hmm. him because blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Like it does make sense in the grand mm -hmm. scheme of the book. Oh, April, I think her knitting club series is better. Is that what people were saying on the reviews too? They like yeah. the knitting club better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the first book in a series is tough. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's it. All right. Hey, Google, what's it? What's your favorite number between one and 10? Six. I really Six. like the number two. Oh, you know, we don't care when about you it. and I hang out together. Hey, Google, stop. <laughs> hey, Google, <laughs> um, forget it. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five and six but i think april i think you already read book two <laughs> let me know if you want book two in this series um if not i will do another number count <laughs> i think I, i'm pretty sure april's the one that said she read the second book right i think so yeah brooke i read the first in the knitting series okay brooke did you like the knitting series better or is it the same? Did it feel the same too? Like, were you like, I'm reading the same book all over again? <laughs> uh, thank you, but give it to somebody else. All right, pick another number, Jesse. <laughs> Nine. Okay, I'm gonna go here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That'd be funny if it lands in April. Eight. Oh my God, it landed on April again. We'll go to okay. the next one. <laughs> Brooke. Brooke, do you want book number two in the vampire? Um, which one? Book club series. As Brooke is typing her other response to us as well. Yeah. You've got a lot to answer for now, Brooke. Yeah. Yeah, Brooke, we're going to make you work for this book. <laughs> I think here, this is the difference in my mind between um, all the paranormal cozies that I've read versus like paranormal romance. Like paranormal romance does a better job or it must be more important in that genre to do more rules and world building. So you know exactly what people's limitations are and what happens if they go out in the sun or right. Versus like cozies, they're just like, we're going to focus on the mystery. There's a vampire. He does stuff. I don't know what he does. Because I don't know if I need him to do other things yet. So I'm not going to tell you till later. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. I feel like that's what happened. Uh, Brooke. Yep. Uh, wait. It seemed a bit similar, I thought. I didn't keep up with the series after that. All right. Uh, that is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Picked April twice. Um, let's see. I feel like I need book two. Okay. It is yours. Yay. Um, yay, Brooke. And I don't know. Brooke, email me your mailing address. Even if I have it before, I possibly lost it. So um, congratulations, Brooke. Yeah. All right. So you guys, next. Oh, so here's the big question. And I'm trying to not say you guys because obviously we're all women. I'm trying to say. <laughs> Hey everyone. Uh, so for next time, you guys got to vote. I said it again. <laughs> you all, y'all got to vote on the book for October and the theme is vampires. And everyone picked Spelling the Tea, which is a parent. It used to be called the paranormal, the vampire tea room, but then she changed it to the magical tea room. I don't know why. I really like the vampire tea room. That sounded very like, maybe she wants to, it's a series. Yeah. Maybe she wants to branch into other like paranormal creatures. Other oh, than maybe. I, I think like also maybe it was confusing because the main character, well, it's just like this one though. The main character's a witch. And then there's a bunch of like hot vampires that work in a tea room. Whereas like here, the main character's a witch. Right. And then there's vampires in a reading book club. So yeah. that's a very clever title though. Spelling the tea. That's yeah. Spelling the tea. So that is our book next time. Let me know too. I'll put this up in the comments. So I was talking to Erin and I asked her if she wanted to host book club next time, but her book won. So <laughs> is that awkward if the author is hosting book club to talk about their own book or are you okay with that? Do you want to change? Like it changes the dynamic, right? Cause you can't really be like, while well, we're talking about Jesse's book, like, what was she thinking? This is such a weird chapter. Or like, yeah, like if Nancy were here, I would not have said half the stuff I said. But I think you have an interesting um, opportunity there to like ask her questions and like get her yeah. take on the story. Yeah, it'd be a different kind of book club. It wouldn't be really like a critique. It'd more just be like, I guess, a chat with the author yeah. kind of thing. Um, uh, I also wanted to say I am loving Patreon. Oh, thanks. So nice that it's such a clean interface with all the Facebook distractions. Yeah. I am so excited about deleting Facebook. It like has helped my life so much. Facebook is not, I do not enjoy it. <laughs> um, the one I won, the one I won. Um, oh, April. Thank you, Jesse, for joining thank us. Thank you guys for letting me hang out and chat about it. It was fun. Um, Amber, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Do you know what you're talking about? It would, we might have been talking about something like five minutes ago that I forgot. Um, it could have been one of the the, the, the knitting the knitting the, series, maybe. Maybe. Or yeah. the book that you guys are reading next month. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of delay sometimes. Um, oh yeah, that's true. She maybe she's talking about spelling the tea. Amber, it's fine. Okay. I would love the author to join us. Okay. Uh, I belong to a book club on Facebook and she talks to the author to discuss the book for the club meeting. I think it's great. Okay. Um, I mean, what happens if nobody likes the book? There have been books where Courtney and I both gave it a one, didn't really like it. <laughs> so I don't know how that would work. Uh, I would like to know the author's thoughts. Okay, cool. Uh, Amber, I enjoy Patreon too. It must be able to chat with each member. Uh, yeah, that is true. You can't really do a chat thing. Uh, the book for next month. Okay, that's what she's talking about, spelling the tea. Yep. So, any other differences that you notice? Because you read a lot of paranormal romance, between paranormal romance versus paracosy, other than the no, world building. The romance. <laughs> the romance is like, it's a huge subplot. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, this, like, for me, I wouldn't say that there was any romance in this. There's sometimes a little mystery, too, I feel like, in the paranormal romance because they have to be doing something they need like something yeah. they're going after or trying to figure out mm -hmm. especially if like the main character doesn't know about like the paranormal existing until like yeah. the inciting incident of the book and then there's that mystery of them figuring it out yeah um uh, oh amber won the book at another meeting and listed it already okay cool uh, Brooke, there are hundreds of people on the club meeting, so there's always some that don't like it, but the meeting is usually pretty productive. Yeah, that's true. 
Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thanks for showing up for Paracozy Book Club. So we'll see you. This one was like super early. We usually meet in the middle of the month. So I don't know if there's less people because people are like surprised by it. But <laughs> um, we'll see you next Wednesday for the Cozy Escape Awards. And then next month, we'll go back to our regular schedule where we'll meet in the middle of the month for Paracozy. So now you have like, you have like a whole month and a week to read the next book, Spelling the Tea. So all right, guys. Oh, I said it again. I need to like have like a guy jar that I can put in there. What do you say? I do guys a lot. Do you do guys a lot? I hate it. It's just so ingrained, right? I feel like I could train myself to say something else. Maybe we do the Southern thing where you just say, oh. hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey y'all. Hey, yeah. Hey, friends. Oh, friends. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. Bye.